Hello and welcome back once again to the Outdoors Station. Now we've got a slightly longer than normal podcast for you, but it's one packed full of information and I think will be of great use to people wherever you're located in the world and you enjoy your hiking and looking for different trails and routes as well as creating your own. We're interviewing Owen Hamilton from the Hiker app something that you may have seen in your digital meanderings through the internet, popping up on various people's websites and social media. So we'll come on with to our chat with Owen shortly. We've got two other things to mention, first of all. The first thing is a thank you, actually, to a long-time listener, 16 years plus, Bill Goodrich, who is a postman over in the US. Now, he has dropped us a note every now and again, and this time he dropped us a note with a, a little donation, which is greatly appreciated. And was, as we've seen him through thousands of miles doing his postal round and four children. Uh, so it's been great that he's enjoyed the content, 550 podcasts. He probably knows them all word perfect because he keeps listening to repeats. So thanks, Bill, once again for your support and everything that goes with it, in particular your lovely note. Now, if you do want to support us at any stage, over on the front page of the website, down on the bottom right-hand corner, there's three ways of doing it, either with uh, Ko-fi, which is a, a short-term one-off payment, Patreon, a, a long-term payment, should you wish to do, do so, or PayPal, and uh, you can then support us in any way you wish, So, which is greatly appreciated. Now, the second note I wanted to, to talk about was Christmas. It's looming upon us now, and we know what it's like. You're going to get through it, and there's going to be a stage at some stage where you sit down and go, oh, I've had enough. I want an adventure. I want to, I want to meet people doing something really interesting and uh, go on something outrageous for next year. Well, I've joined the Explorers Connect website which is a linking place where they join outdoors enthusiasts and adventurers together with other like-minded people who might be interested in taking part in some of their adventures. And as you can see on the screen here, there's uh, quite a lot to get your teeth into if you're thinking you want to do something different and adventurous next year. Starting at the top there, we've got uh, polar explorations in uh, Sweden and Norway. Uh, Lucy is looking for teammates for North and South Pole. Uh, sailing, uh, they're looking for various rowers and just skipping down, looking for photographers, teammates for a car journey to the Scottish Highlands, women needed for a transatlantic row in 2025. There's a lot going on and there's a lot of adventurous people out there. So if you get bored, join the Explorers Direct website. You see it if you just do a quick Google search, it's very easy. And you might whet your appetite for something a little bit more interesting next year and get rid of some of that Christmas pudding. Okay, well, that's my brief introduction. I'm now going to hand over to Owen, who's going to tell us all about the Hiker app and how we can get the most out of it. Well, Owen, nice to have you on board and lovely to speak to the person behind the Hiker app. Now, it's, a, it's an app that I've been seeing around, let's should we say, attached to a whole variety of influencers and websites around the internet for the last 12 months or more. But I think most people might be curious to know actually what the history is behind the app. How did you start and, and when did you start and how hard is it to start an app like this? I don't think, first of all, Bob, uh, thanks for having us, uh, ha having me on. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, but to answer your question, I don't think there is necessarily, you know, a, a, a rule book on building an app for, especially for a hiking app. There is no rule book for that. Um, Paul Finley, who's our CEO and founder and, and one of my oldest friends, he, he kind of came up with the idea back about four years ago i think to develop an app specifically for long distance hiking trails and not even just long long distance hiking trails in general he wanted to build one for our local trail which is the uh, the wicklow way uh, it's about a 128 kilometer trail that goes from um uh, from uh, the bottom of wicklow national park right up to to to, to dublin city and he went and he just decided to to teach himself how to code. He was not a developer. He actually came from a completely different industry altogether. 
And you just decided to do this one day because there was no other application in the market that that was doing what he was looking for, which is provide him all the information that he needed when he was going out on a on a long distance walk like this. And through that, he understood that, you know, there's way more trails like this all around the world. So he wanted to, to bring them all into the app as well. That was the, the I suppose, the beta version of Hiker, if you will, which is called Waymark Trails. And that had, I think, a total of about five or six trails. From there, then, myself and a a couple of other guys, we joined the team and formed what is Hiker and then started to scale up and to to build an even bigger product. Wow. Wow. And are you all based in in Ireland? Yes, in Dublin, yeah. In Dublin? Yeah, excellent. Okay. And I I don't do coding and I have no idea how difficult it is, but you're obviously sitting and looking over his shoulder as these things happen. Is it quite a complicated process? It is. Uh, Now, again, I'm the same. I'm not a coder. I I, I listen to our developers, Paul and and to Mark and to to Pete and and, uh, Manahil and all of our developers that are on our team. And I I listen to them and it's it's literally like gibberish. It's uh, I don't know what they're saying. (laughs) But uh, the 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 complicated part of it is, is that when it comes to mobile apps, you've got two uh, two platforms, what is multiple platforms but two main platforms which is android and ios and rather than do what a lot of other applications do which is use a single platform which then builds the app on both platforms uh paul decided no we want to have the most cutting edge technology uh for our apps so writing on native uh platforms for both apps so there is a native app for ios so it's it's specifically built for ios and another one specifically built for for android so that just makes things more complicated but it also means that we have the best tools possible we we are constantly at the cutting edge of technology when it comes to building these apps you would notice the difference if you were looking at an application that was built on a uh it's a Again, gibberish. I, I don't know what the, the names of these platforms are called, but if you saw one that is built for both applications at the same time, you would know, notice the difference. When you look at Hiker, you can see that there is they, they are built specifically for those phones um, and for that that those types of users. So how long has it been in the history then since it actually started? I, I'm not really aware of a date, but I'm sure I've been seeing the logo for the last year or so. <laughs> It's funny you say that because we we kind of think back to when did actually hiker actually start? And as I said there, like Paul had the original idea, I think back in 2016 or so, when he started building the app by himself. And time seems to have just completely slipped by. And now you have COVID over the last couple of years as well, where time was just irrelevant. Uh, some sort of t- a time vacuum where we believe things were last year, but it was actually four years ago. So <laughs> I, 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 Hiker has actually been, I suppose, an established company for the last two years. Um, before that, I suppose it was uh, a bit of a side hustle um, and still was a side hustle, even as a, an established company up until last year when we got a bit of funding. And um, so, yeah, 2020 was when it really kind of kicked off for us. Oh, excellent. So you've had some funding then. So it's, it's some serious bucks behind it now. Yeah, yeah. So we, we're, uh, we, we went through a, a thing called, um, sorry, NDRC. It's a, it's a, a government backed startup program here in Ireland where they invest into companies and it's a safe investment. So they essentially take uh, part equity when we raise the next round, which we also successfully did earlier this year, where we got backed by a venture capital firm in the UK, um, Enterprise Ireland as well, it's, which is the uh, the kind of government uh, venture capital uh, wing of the government here in Ireland and a couple of private investors as well. So oh. that has given us a good bit of runway and that's probably why you're seeing our logo popping up a little bit more because we have a little bit more money to spend growing our team and and getting our getting our name out there. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. That's that's great. It's obviously it's good to it's good to have that feeling when other people are putting finance into it. You know that you've, you're onto a good thing. You're onto a good product if other people believe in you as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's 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 a it's a big learning curve as well when you're when you are out looking for people like that. And 
you you do have to stick with your mission and your vision for the product. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've spoken to a lot of people over the years that have said, oh, you should do this, you should do that, turn the platform into this type of, of product that is completely different to what we want to do. But uh, with our investors that we found, we've pitched the idea, we pitched the vision, we pitched the mission, and they back us. And you know, it's it, we've complete co- creative license over it, and they they trust that we're doing the right thing, and it's starting to prove prove right. So uh, they're pretty happy about that. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. Um, so for people watching this that sort of may have just been aware of you but don't really know the sort of figures you've been going now, as you say, it was 2016. That's some time, really. It's quite quite a history. Um, what sort of numbers have you got members wise and, and people and how many trails are, are we talking about? Uh, so numbers wise, we're just about to reach a landmark of 600,000 users worldwide. Um, and most of that has come in in the last two years. As I said, Hiker has only really been in existence for the last two years. Previous to that was a, a different app. So the users that we would have had in that didn't transfer over. Um, so yeah, 600,000 users wor- worldwide. Um, trails, we are just about to reach 21,000 trails. And I suppose there's a, there's a big thing with trails on our platform as well. Um, we, one of the things that people will notice about our application is that yes you can record trails yes you can plan trails and yes you can share them with your friends and your family and your and your hiking buddies but they are not publicly available as as what we call curated trails uh, the reason for that is because we want to make sure that all the information that we present on our uh, on our platforms that we're i suppose trying our best to make sure that that information is as accurate as possible so using verified sources where we can so not using user generated content uh it's a really tough decision to make uh, to uh, to, to make almost every single day when we see like the amount of recordings that come in the amount of plan trails that come in all the time on the platform we're like there's literally hundreds of thousands of these that we could put up as as public trails but uh, until we figure out a way that we can validate that information and make sure that it is uh, safe for mm-hmm. our users to use, we choose not to not to put that uh, put that up publicly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very fine, very fine line to to, to walk, isn't it? So uh, before we actually look at the app, because we're going to go and have a look at the app now um, in, yeah. a, in a second. Well, you know, when you look at sort of um, general mapping apps and route mapping mm-hmm. and uh, location maps and your app, what what is there? Is there a, a definite dividing line between the two? Because I know your some of your main features, your pro features do overlap quite significantly with with the um, normal mapping apps as i'd call them really yeah um I, I guess what we've done is taken our lessons that we've learned over the last couple of years in the long distance segment so again hiker originally started as, as an app specifically for long distance trails so what does a long distance hiker need they need to know where towns uh pharmacies shops water sources campsites all the accommodations and amenities and, and, and things that they will need to plan out a long distance route. Um, so we, we translated that, that learning along with all of the other mapping uh, technology that you would need. So your, your elevation profiles, your um, measurement tools where you're dissecting the route um, and uh, t- took all of that into something that's more um, widely applicable to a, a, a much wider variety of hikers. Um, we then started partnering with a lot of mapping agencies like uh, OS Maps, like uh, Harvey Maps. Over here, we've got Ordnance Survey Ireland. We've got East West Maps, all very well respected and well loved map- mapping providers and brought them in as a product that people can use alongside all of the other tools that we built in the past. So it's it's hard to say that there's a, a dividing line because what we've tried to do is actually bring in all the best parts of what we had and what some of the other applications do provide and bring them in onto one platform. I suppose the big dividing line for us is that, that a lot of other applications that are out there are multi-sport. They're for, they're for lots of different things. You know, it's for hiking, it's for biking, it's for trail running, it's for paddling, it's for, uh, I don't know, cave diving. It's, there's lots of different uh, uses for it, but we're building it 
specifically in the mind of a hiker. We've 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 called the products, we call the company after our target audience. It's for hikers. And um, yes, you can use it for trail running. I'm a trail runner myself. I do it. I I use the app for that. Um, you can use it for biking. Absolutely, we have people users that that contact us and ask us about uh, uh, building stuff for for bikers. Um, but for now, we're building specifically with the the user in mind, which is the hiker, um, which require certain uh, sets of tools. And our roadmap is 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 pointing in that direction. Sure, sure. One of the maps that that you can overlay, which I've, I'm absolutely fascinated with because it's just something that really does uh, interest me, is the his, historical one, which is available, I think, yes. with, well, is it just the UK, I think? But I was just curious when I saw it, just uh, how difficult is it to, as you say, partner with these different mapping organisations? Because normally they really are very protective about their copyright um and it's the historical one i personally find interesting but obviously you've got all the main names on there um is it a difficult negotiation or are most of them now more aware that this is the way they need to go to to keep relevant um it's it's as it's very nuanced is the word i'll say like the different mapping agencies are at different stages like ordnance survey for instance they're uh government or semi-private, I'm not sure exactly what their status is, but they, they are they are a huge organization and their maps are actually available on multiple different applications and multiple different websites. Um, they are licensed out all around the world for different uses. Uh, so they actually have a, a whole division and even sales team that are set up to, to manage that. Um, so dealing with the OS was actually quite easy and uh, developed a great relationship with them. Um, and uh, the, some of the other mapping providers as well, like Carbon Maps, fantastic maps and fantastic uh, a small company based up in 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 in, uh, in Scotland as well. Uh, I suppose the the to, uh, there is a hesitation. I I, I gather there is a, a hesitation for a lot of mapping agencies where you know there there is certain loyalty with their customers and they want to make sure that that they are not underselling their product on on platforms like ours so we just have to uh, don't want to get into the intricacies of it but the, we just have to be sure that we are serving them right in terms of how we are displaying their maps we are serving them right in terms of how we're selling i suppose their maps so like what they get in return for that and um and also listen to them on on their advice as well like there, there's a lot of great ideas that we've gotten from harvey maps there's a lot of great ideas that we've gotten from uh east west maps over here in ireland and we're now repeating that around the world where they're they're coming to us and saying well you know why it, it, you could use this you know could you build a, a piece of technology that would work with this type of map over here you know um I'm not sure if that necessarily answers your question. It, it's nuanced, I guess, is the, is, the, is the shortest answer I can give you. I guess, I guess you know, you're, you being a smaller company, you're lighter on your feet. So um, as you say, if somebody comes up with a good idea, but, but something like OS, a big sort of company, is not going to move on it very quickly at all, and it's got too many committees to go through, you guys can, can react and, and obviously bring it, take it to your advantage. Okay, well, look, I think we've, we've got the history. We've got the background, which was fascinating. And I've been questions I've really wanted to ask, really, when I see somebody like yourself with, uh, with an interesting product. How about uh, we look at the app on the phone as a starting point? So that'll yeah. probably be the first thing that people see when they, they download the app. And you can tell us uh, perhaps what's free and what's an additional uh, level. Now, let, before we do that, let's actually look at the levels just so that we can tell people. Have I got it on the screen here somewhere? Yeah, sure. Uh, so if you actually just click on uh, above there, you'll see uh, subscribe and then hiker features. Um, and then if you click on that, that will actually show you what is divided amongst the, the, the various different levels. So essentially you've got three levels. You've got free, you've got pro, and you've got pro plus. Um, a lot of what you get with, uh, while it looks like there's a lot of green and yellow on the, on the far right hand side of the screen, there is still quite a lot that you get for free on the Hiker app at the moment. So if you're looking for verified or curated trails, as we call them on the platform, of which we're just about to hit 21,000, you're going to get them for free. You're going to you're going to see them 
You'll be able to explore them completely for free. You can see all the accommodations, amenities, all the stuff that I was talking about earlier on. You can see that for free. Uh, you'll be able to search for your a specific trail for your needs as well. So if you're looking for something that's, you know, two miles, 10 miles, six kilometers, 100 kilometers, um, you can find that. You can search it by elevation profile. You can search by um, a, a number of different factors that will that will help you find the, the, the best trail. Um, obviously GPS, all that kind of stuff, all works completely for free. Along with that, you get articles that we post uh, fairly regularly from some of our partner writers. Uh, Abby Barnes is, is one of them that we've had uh, re featured there recently um, that will kind of give you a lot more detail about the trail. So first-hand stories of actually h hiking on those trails. Um, there's photos, reviews, all that kind of stuff. Then if you move on to Pro, Pro is where you get offline maps so if you are heading out on a long day hike or a multi-day hike or you're going out somewhere where there's no coverage or you're going to be out for a long time you want to save that trail or that map onto your phone and the reason is is because you don't want to be out there stuck with no coverage or draining your battery from constantly connecting and getting a signal so you want to have that saved to your phone so part of the pro package is is that you get that uh, you get offline maps so you can download to your phone. Uh, other features that you get with Pro is the measurement tool. So I mentioned this earlier on where you can dissect the trail into uh, sections to tell you exactly what the distance is from this point to this point. So you might be um, at the foot of a hill and you want to know how far it is until you get to the far side of that hill and what the elevation is going to be like. So you, using the measurement material, you can get that. Or if you wanted to know how far it is from here to the next bridge or to the next town, that's what you would use the measurement tool for. Um, and then we also have, for those that are not using uh, curated trails, you can download map regions. So this is where you are just out exploring a particular region and uh, there's a bunch of map layers that we give away for free, including the OSM, OSM layers, uh, which uh, includes outdoor, nature, uh, transport, kind of stuff that might not necessarily be hiking related, but they're all kind of part of the, of the free package. But you can then download them a, a map region. So say you wanted to hike in the Lake District, you can download a section of the Lake District and go and hike that and you'll be able to see exactly where you are on that map and it's all offline. Um, and then one of the last features is uh, print maps. So you can actually uh, download a PDF of a particular trail so that you can print that off and that will print it off in, in, uh, in stages. So it, it's not that the whole trail, say it's a hundred kilometer trail is gonna be on this one A4 sheet. It'll break that down into, into stages and dissectable stages where you can actually uh, read that so it's it's a, I suppose it's a safety feature making sure that you have a backup in the case where you you do not have signal um or, or sorry your your phone dies you do have a backup you have a print backup um and then onto pro plus just the, which the, the the highest tier you get everything that you uh, i i just mentioned there in pro and free you also get those premium layers that we mentioned os harvey maps east west maps ordnance survey um and the list will continue to grow we have map map layers in new zealand map layers in australia we're getting map layers in mainland europe we're just about to close one in the us so there's plenty there for for people to to, to check out fabulous and the uh, price uh, i mean great explanation thanks very much the uh, the price is approximately about 30 pounds is that 30 pounds or 30 euros a year uh so that would be in euros 30 euros per year for the pro and then it is 60 euros per year for the Pro Plus. Right, excellent. Okay, well, that's great. Let's let's actually move on to the app itself now so people can see the app in, in operation. We're going to set this, uh, set this up now so that we've got the screen all sorted, ready to go. And Owen's going to talk us through through the app. Now, we're looking at the Pro app, I presume, rather than the, the free app at the moment. But hopefully, you'll just explain the differences as we yeah. go through. Yeah, absolutely. So this is your home screen, uh, which is uh, essentially is your your curated trail list. So here you'll see nearby trails. So when you log in for the first time, you'll be asked to allow your your location information to be sent to us. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, so we can show you this kind of content. 
but also too when you're on the map itself that you're saying yes show me where i am on that map that little blue dot which i'll show you now in a, in a few minutes but the first thing you see here is your home screen which will show you your nearby trails uh, recently view trails if you haven't opened up the app before you won't see that but as as you use the app it will start to to repopulate these things so some of the, the recent trails that i've looked at all kind of, or sorry some of the nearby trails here are these ones that are at the top of my screen then you go into your recently view ones then we also have some curated lists as well so if you're going to particular destinations like the peat district we've got uh top 10 walks in the peat district here we've got uh mountain peaks in the uk so ben nevis track mam tor uh snowden scaffold pike so there's a, a bunch of different ones there some of our own picks and uh, some monthly feature trails this is showing november we also do have oh, there's december there as well so this is just a a, a gallery of, of trails uh, that are either nearby recommended or some that you've already looked at and you'll see at the top here and this is all free as well this is part of the free package i see at the top here you've got articles uh, so this is what i was talking about where we give you a little bit more information about the trails themselves there might be about multiple trails it's where we've uh, given you a bit more detail maybe sometimes first-hand detail about some of the trails that we feature so recently here we have uh abby barnes uh, i think previous guest on this podcast uh, she wrote about the Hadrian's wall paths which she did earlier this year um and if you open that up that will open up a web browser and will show you the actual blog itself so it's a fairly well written and well detailed blog about her time on the Hadrian's Wall path. Um, and there's a bunch of different uh, articles here written by some of our writers, Killian Anderson there. Um, Killian Anderson's quite a, a prominent one. There's one by myself and Max Winhouse. So there's a bunch of different writers that we have that, that, that provide that kind of content. So staying here, I'll go into one of the trails and show you the types of things that are available on Pro, sorry, free Pro and Pro Plus. So opening up on our trail overview. So before we even get into the proper map, you've got a small little uh, map preview. So this is showing you kind of a really, really basic map at the top here and a few photographs from that trail. I think there's only one on this one because I think I did this one myself and I uploaded one photograph. Um, you've got your reviews down here. You've got the option to record trail, edit it, download for offline and export to GPX. I won't go uh, touch them right now because some of them include some of our pro features and pro plus features. Down here, you've got a bit more detail about the statistics of the trail. So you've got your distance, your time, your elevation gain, your elevation gain per, me, uh, per kilometer as well as there and some of the tags that are associated with it. Um, this purple button, which I've kind of skipped over, um this is a feature that we brought in earlier this year when we launched a new version of the app which is put there to highlight the the I suppose the work that's been put in by the the organizations that builds these trails now in this case there, there's nothing there there is no trail organization behind this because it, this is just a, a route that i walked myself and i put up onto the platform so there's no unless people want to donate to own uh, i'm not going to do that because i'm pretty sure there's some sort of conflict of interest for that uh, but you can see when you go into some of the more prominent trails, so say, for instance, the South West Coast Path in the UK, we have a partnership with, their, with them where you can actually click on that button. It brings you to a page where you can actually donate directly to the, to the trail organization and support their work. Um, down the bottom here, you've got the download print map, which, as I mentioned, it's, it's, a, it's a great backup as well if you're going to be going out for a long hike. Um, so... Back up here at the very top, you can see you've got your overview, you've got reviews. So some of the re reviews uh, that were put there. So apparently there's plenty of food options on this walk and uh, some of the amenities that are available on this as well, which is kind of a, just an overview of what you will see in the map itself. So can I uh, can I just come in and there, Owen, um, the amenities yeah. one, I think is quite quite a useful one that uh, now that th well, do people pay to have their B&B &B or hotel or whatever attached to the app or does it pick up the information from data somewhere? And also, what range of amenities do you cover? Not just accommodation, presumably, but what about food, water, that type of thing? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I suppose I can use the, the map to kind of answer that question. And um, so we use uh, multiple different sources to get our, I guess, well, our, our accommodations, amenities, um, uh, uh, features into in the app. So we use, uh, I suppose, Google is one really handy source that we can use. Uh, there's lots of information as well out there on trail organization websites as well that we can just put in that information. We don't charge businesses to do this. This is free information that we put up for for hikers. Um, we have toyed with the idea of maybe turning this into some sort of B and B, uh, sorry, B two B business to business operation where we do charge organizations to go up there, but ultimately they they are not our customers. What we are trying to do is offer information to our to our users and to our hikers. So, uh, so when you open up the map, this is the the trail map uh, as is at the moment, and it gives you the full route from start to finish. You'll see that there's a, a bunch of different things on the screen here at the moment. So I suppose keeping in uh, with your question about accommodations and amenities, this plus sign or the action sign down here, this brings up this uh, small little window. And at the top there, you see points of interest and trail lines. So this gives us the opportunity to add in some of the different amenities and accommodations and various different uh, way markers that are along this trail. So let's let's put on a few so bus stops fast food we want to see post office maybe a bit of history as well let's close this off and all of a sudden you've got a lot more information on the map so all these little markers along the map that that indicate various different things so as we mentioned we have uh, bus stops so you can see here you can see information about that bus so what's the operator What's the name of the bus stop? There's a, uh, some information there. It might not necessarily be useful to know the name of the bus stop, but uh, we put it there anyway. You've got some um, historical information as well. So Archibald's Castle is something that's there. Uh, Lee's Kitchen is a fast food restaurant that's available there. But if you're looking for accommodation, let's get rid of these guys because our screen will get very full if I leave them there. Uh, accommodation. There actually doesn't seem to be accommodation on this route at the moment. Let's put in uh, shelters. Are there any shelters? Might be making a fool of myself now by putting something like that in. There is actually a couple of shelters. These are probably train shelters that we've picked up. So yeah, not the best example for that. Um, but what you would see is a, a bunch of different hotels and uh, b and Bs, any kind of accommodation that we do have on our list and we'll give you a website that will give you a phone number that you can contact. Uh, so this comes in particularly handy if you are meant to stay in a campsite or you're meant to, to wild camp on, on a particular trail, didn't work out, you need to find somewhere uh, nearby, we, there's all the information that you need. You're gonna have your phone number, you're gonna have a website, you can call them immediately and see if you can make a booking. Um, so that's one part of it. Then you have the ability to uh, to reverse the trail. So say for instance, you are you sh rocking up to the, the, the trail head and you don't want to go the route that they have recommended, that we have recommended, you can reverse it. And all that does is just flips the route. So when you are going out to record that, it is picking up that you're going in the opposite direction to what has been recommended. Um, it is also much more relevant when you're talking about long distance trails. So say for instance, you were doing the coast to coast, uh, the Wainwrights coast to coast, and you were, we recommend to go from, from west to east, but you actually want to do east to west. Uh, that, that changes a lot of things. That changes uh, the stages of the trail. That changes the mileage of the trail from point to point. So that makes a lot more sense when you're looking at trails like that. Um, and then you can again. Clear can I just so you just, can just come in again, nice... and, Owen? Yeah. Just a yeah. Quick question. The um, who who breaks down the distance for a daily on a long distance trail? Say a a, five, a ten day trail. Um, there's a certain amount of distance one would walk. Uh, some people are obviously going to be capable of walking much further than others. Is there some mm -hmm. settings in the app where you say my average daily walk is ten miles, fifteen miles, or whatever? Or is it does it make an assumption? Yeah, I'll actually quickly show you this. Um, so if you go into your profile, which is then the bottom right hand corner there, 
And if you click on the, the cog up at the top right hand corner there, that'll bring you into your settings. And you go into customize and you can go into your uh, hike time settings. Now it's, it's, it's a bit kind of like numerical here at the moment, but you can choose the distance that you can walk and the elevation that you can walk in a particular time frame. In this, it's, it's per hour. The average for most humans is five kilometers uh, per hour and 600 meters of elevation per hour, but you can increase that right up to 10K, which I, uh, I don't think I can, as a trail slash mountain runner, I don't think I can even achieve that in a walking pace. Uh, so fair play to you if you can actually do that, uh, but you can change that and that will affect then the, the height times that will be projected then on the map itself. Great, right. thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. So uh, if we go back into the map then, um, I can jump in. Let's let go into a different trail here so we get a bit more of a uh, mountain landscape. So viewing the map again. So uh, one of the pro features that you can get is the measurement tool. So this is a, a way for you to actually measure from one part of a trail. Say, for instance, we want to know how far from the start to the edge of this forest over here. Now we can actually see that it's a 2.2 kilometer distance, roughly 22 minutes based on my uh, projection times. And there's only roughly two meters of elevation in the, at this point. So, and then you can clear that off. So that it will, it really helps someone, especially when they're trying to find, as I said in the example earlier on, if they're trying to know exactly what the terrain and what the challenge is going to be up ahead. Um, some of the other pro features that are going to be, sorry, the pro plus features that will be available on this uh, part of it will be changing your map layers. There's a bunch of free map layers that we provide. So if you go into OSM, all of these map layers here are free. So I'll just show you how you do that again. Sometimes I get a little bit ahead of myself when I'm showing it, showing the map. If you click on this, what uh, looks like a uh, two pieces of paper stacked on top of each other. That's your map layer button. And you can see that your active map layer at the moment is the outdoors layer, which is, is a open street maps, uh, open source layer. If you want to add another map layer to, to that, you click on the open map or say add map layer and you choose the map layer that you want to, to add on. Part of the Pro Plus package will uh, get you access to the more premium map layers, such as Harvey Maps. So let's uh, go on to, now I don't know if they're gonna have a map in this particular part of Ireland. I don't think they will. Let's go into East-West Mapping because they definitely do. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll go into Ordnance Survey Ireland because they have full coverage in, the, in Ireland, so don't, there we go. So you can see there that the map layer has changed. And you can see that bo both map layers are currently in action. So that will be one of the features. So let's, if we were to go back out and go to a trail, say in the UK, let's go into the Peak District, let's view the map. So we can show off one of the map, oh, excuse me. Technology has been playing ball pretty well so far. We're just gonna make sure that uh, you can remove your map layer here as well if you need to change to a different map layer. So Harvey Maps, let's go for Super Walkers. And there you go. Harvey Maps is now active showing the route with their layer. So that's one of the pro plus features that you would have. You'll notice up here that the the, uh, the out of the the bar just below back saying out of range. The reason is because we also have the ability for you to put in your custom or your local grid references, or lo longitude and latitude. So again, looking at features that are are specifically applicable to to hikers. So if I wanted to change that, I can go back out here, go into my settings, go to custom map projections or your grid references. I've got it currently set to Irish grid references. We can change that to uh, British grid, re grid references or to just long lat. Let's uh, put it on British grid references so you can see that in action. We'll open up the map again. 
And now you can see that the British grid references have shown up on screen. So the British grid references is there on the left. And as I scroll around the map, you can see in the crosshairs, that is the elevation that is uh, that, that, that where the crosshairs are on the right hand side. So you've got SK2428, the numbers, and then 175 meters, that is the elevation at that point. And you can see it change as it move around. Cool. Going okay, a couple of here. questions then. Uh, with yeah. the with the basic app, um, two two scenarios I'm I'm thinking of. One is uh, an emergency case scenario. Uh, I just need to check. Am I right in thinking with the the basic app, you need to have coverage f to use the app um, at, at any one time? Uh, nextly, if that's correct, um, is there an emergency button or something where you can go, this is exactly where I am at the moment, and remember it so that you can, when you do get a signal or clear a signal, you phone the, the assistance and you can say, this is where I am exactly. And then the other question is uh, completely separate from the emergency side, more a case of, right, if I'm visiting an area which I don't know or a country I don't know and I'm looking for trails, is it best to do it through the, the app on the phone or do we then move over to the desktop? So the, the map, as I showed you just, just there, if when you're in that map or any map on the phone for, uh, for that matter, so let, even let's just go into the, the main map itself. Say, for instance, I'm going to go over to where I am here in sunny Dunleary. Uh, this will give me the grid references at the top of the screen there. So you might not have a phone signal, but you will have a GPS signal. And you'll be able to see exactly what your grid, re grid references are on that top panel. But there's no emergency remember this this location button as such. You'd have to do a screen grab, which would obviously be the easiest way of doing it, wouldn't it? I suppose the screen grab at the, at the moment will be it be the easiest thing to do. So just uh, taking this quick screenshot of that and saving that to your phone, that'll tell you exactly where that is. Uh, good, it's a good point. It's not something that we currently have. Uh, so uh, I, I believe that's probably in our in, in our pipeline. There's a bunch of different emergency uh, contacts, emergency features that we need to to implement into into the app, but we don't currently have that one. Yeah, the second question was 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 not related to the emergency side. It's more a case of um, I'm going to a country or I'm going to an area which I'm not familiar with. Um, how is it best for me to scope around and see if there's many trails in that area that might be of interest to me? Is it better to do it on the app or to do it on the desktop? Uh, you can do on both. Um, I suppose the, the the benefit of having the the explore on the phone, which I can show you now as well, is that you are seeing exactly where you are and it shows you all the, the local trails. So say for instance, you land in, in, uh, you land in Dublin or you land in, let's go somewhere where there's a lot of trails. Let's go over to, okay, we've got Cologne. You land in Frankfurt and you're, you're kind of roaming around Fra Frankfurt and you're trying to find trails that are near there. We don't have a lot of, uh, short trails in Frankfurt uh, near Frankfurt at the moment, but we have a, a number of trails in the area but this is picking up your location that you're in that in that vicinity and you can click on those markers and that will actually show you the trail as it is and then you can click into it to find more details about it the desktop okay. is really handy because if you're going if you're planning somewhere you're, you're planning to go to frankfurt and you want to see all the trails that are available in frankfurt the the desktop app is is quite handy for that because you have a much larger map available to you you can see exactly where all those trails are but we can show that we can go through that in a moment sure so the only other question that comes to mind then watching the screen was obviously there are various numbers that pop up on the page as you are zooming in and out i presume that's a number of trails that are in that area yeah they're clusters of trails so if if, uh, if there is more than one trail in within a radius they will just cluster them together and as you zoom in if you pinch and to zoom in it'll show you or reveal all the trails that are in that area Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's been a great, um, a great experiment on showing the technology working in different ways. Let's go a stage further now and try it on the on the desktop. So, if yeah, uh, if you uh, want to just change over, so you've got the desktop screen, and I will come back to you as soon as I can see the screen there, which I can now, which is great. So let's now take it away uh, on. The desktop now. So we're looking at the desktop now coming in again, uh, and I see Hiker Pro is enabled. So we're looking at the Hiker Pro level. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, this is the homepage of the website, just hiker.app, or if you want, you can type in hiker.com, uh, uh, both of them to the right page. Uh, so on on this page, it's a, it's a fairly basic, but it kind of gives you a similar feel as the homepage on the app, where it gives you a bit of a, a gallery of trails that are there. I actually uh, got a bit ahead of myself here. We are over 21,000 trails at the moment. So 21,100, this is a live counter which shows you the amount of trails that we have on our platform, the amount of accommodations and uh, amenities that are available and some of the custom hikes that have been created so far. This is not a live number. We actually have plenty more than that. And if you're looking at this on a mobile, you'll uh, you'll also have the ability to click some of these buttons to actually download the, the, the app to your phone. Some of the other things that are mentioned here is around uh, our trail sustainability, our trail support. So a lot of the work that we do organizations to support their work and the hiker podcast. So if you like the sound of my voice, um, I also interview people from the, the hiking world and universe on the hiking podcast at the hiker podcast, which you can listen to on the homepage of the website here or through our various different channels. So looking at the, 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 the key functionality of the, of the, the uh, hiker website one of the biggest features of it is our trail planner so i'll open up that here uh, so the trail planner is a way for people to to uh, i suppose draw their own trails or create their own hikes and you can use a lot of the functionality that you get with the app as well so you can use your um your your different map layers if you have a pro, a pro plus model uh sorry Pro Plus package, and you can save them offline as well if you have your Pro package. So let's go ahead and just create a trail because this is, I suppose, doing this will will illustrate us the best. So let's go over to the Lake District, which I believe is, yes, up here, um, and let's create a hike. So I'm currently using the uh, OpenStreetMap layer at the moment, but I'm gonna change that to one of the Harvey Map layers. Let's go to Superwalk. Oh, that's Ireland. Sorry, apologies. Let's go to Superwalkers UK, and we'll add that to the uh, to the to the active layers. Sometimes it does not all, all the time, but uh, it's working there now perfectly. So we've got uh, a Harvey Maps active here, and let's go and create a hike. So I'm going to do a hike that we actually did there not too long ago ourselves, where we went up Wandsfell Pike and just need to find Wandsfell, here it is. And we started, I think, in this car park over here. And say I want to just get to the next point, which is along the trail over here somewhere, you just click there. And what this does, it uses uh, the available data on OpenStreetMaps, which is a global resource on open trails or open paths or open roads to create trails. And that's, that's using this feature here, which is Snap to Trail. If there is no information about that trail available and you click here and all of a sudden it's wrapped all the way down here and around, it will, uh, you can turn this feature off. So uh, let me undo that last one. Snap to trail is off and I can kind of point where I want to go, but you can see here, it's just, it's a straight line. There's, there is no following of an actual trail. So I can undo all these guys and get back to where I was. You might have also seen it down here, you've got your elevation profile, which is 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 gathering data as you're building the trail. And let's go up to the top of Wandsfell. Oop, I forgot to turn and snap the trail back on. Up to the top. And then we can go right back down to the very end again, and it will just follow the same. The, the, it'll follow the most logical path to get right back down. Okay, so we've created our trail. We've used Harry Maps, but as I said, you can use even some of the free maps. You'll see this kind of cool looking yellow box here. So what this does generates the map in 3D mode. So if you want to get a bit more perspective on this 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 trail or the, the landscape, see what you're going to be doing in a, a 3D world, you can do this by toggling this button here and using this uh, kind of zoom feature uh, it's kind of like a bearing to control through the map or to to, uh, to toggle through the map. So here you can see your start, your elevation going all the way up. So it's a really kind of cool feature to see 
some of the free maps or even some of the the premium maps in 3d mode so you really get to see the likes of fairfield which is just over here and some of the wainwrights in 3d while using not just harvey maps but open uh or, or certain all the different maps from around the world so that's that then uh, so you've got a loop root functionality here as well so that it kind of did does what i just did there where it will go back the same route or find a, a, a another route to loop around so if we just quickly go back and do that loop the route and that has well it's actually just done what i've just done which is it's found the the shortest route back to the start and that's what a, the loop route button does you also have the ability to upload a gpx so if you have a gpx file for a trail that you want to go uh, to add and then to you can do that button and then down here you got save this trail so if you want to save this this hike then and go and look at it on your mobile phone you can do that by clicking that button save the the trail so once fell click save that that is now saved to my planned trails and i can go now onto my mobile onto my smartphone and i can see that trail some of the, the data it takes a little bit of time the elevation gain does take a, a minute or so to to live update but that will update shortly and I'll be able to see that then on my phone. And then I can actually record my hike on my phone as well. So I can go and and actually record my my actual activity on that trail. Yeah, so the uh, that's the, the trail planner. And so the Explore map uh, is a, a way for, as I said, on the, on the phone where you can search for nearby trails or trails in a particular destination. The Explore map allows you to do that, but with a much larger map at, at, at hand. Uh, so if you zoom in here, as I said, there's over 21,000 trails worldwide here. Those are going to be, be in Ireland, in the UK, in Europe, US, and Australia, New Zealand. We are building more more trails uh, as we go. We're we're roughly adding about 150 trails per day, um, and it, so this this map will become more cluttered as time goes on. But you can see here at the top of the uh, the map, you've got different ways of searching for trails. You can search by distance, elevation, difficulty, and some of the features that are are on the, those trails. So if you click on one of the trails here, you'll be given a elevation profile immediately of that trail. You'll be given the name, some of the features, sorry, the pictures, some of the stats, uh, descriptions, and you can click on here, and that'll bring a full trail description. Um, where you can view the, the entire map, which will give you the same information that you see on the, on the app, which is the accommodations, the amenities, the various different trail lines. And you've got even more stats. You've got your uh, even more detailed elevation profile. There's reviews here as well that you can scroll through. Uh, we've list out a lot of the amenities as well the accommodations and as we talked about earlier there's the various different stages so if you don't want to do the entire thing in one go you want to break it down into stages we give you the individual stages of that trail broken down here into time into distance and into elevation both the desktop and the uh, the mobile app are very powerful tools um so I, I guess the best advice is for people to, to i suppose to just to jump on and use start using the app start using the phone uh, start using the desktop um to see for yourself well that was a pretty uh, pretty extensive explanation as you can see we've you know looking at your screen then you've gone slightly dark so the sun <laughs> sun's yeah, going down slowly light. Yeah, <laughs> but I was uh, blinded well, thanks, a few minutes ago. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Owen, for uh, for a very detailed explanation. I think we've we've gone into a lot of detail there for people, and obviously, if they want to to know more, they can contact you directly. So we've uh, got the information there to to contact you directly. The app is free, of course, for the basic app, and uh, we happen to have a discount code, a twenty percent discount code, which is TOS twenty if you want to use that and that is live for 12 months until December 2023 so thanks very much for for doing that but I think we've pretty well covered everything uh, that that I think most people would want to know about this uh, this particular piece of app this particular software it certainly 
good to see that you can actually take if you're feeling lazy use somebody else's trail and use that as a way to get to know an area or whatever and if you want to set out to do a long route yourself you've obviously got all the information there particularly the the amenities i think is quite a useful one just having that research done for you as opposed to piling through different guidebooks which are old and out of date and trying to work out which place is still open i think is uh, is a very useful facility so thanks very much for that is there anything you think we've missed at all that's uh, short and sweet you could bring to uh, bring to the audience uh, there's nothing really at the moment. Well, the, the, uh, 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 apologies for the the lengthy description of, of the application. They, we do get a little bit excited when we're trying to to, to go through these things. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of stuff there for people to to, to get stuck into. We have a lot of uh, documentation. There's loads of blogs and things that you can look at. Videos that show you how to use the app because it is there's a lot to it. Um, and and as you can see, like I tried to to, to show you as much as I could here on this. We do have something big coming up in January 2023. So uh, I suppose just keep keep an eye on that. Yeah, there's some of the videos that we have featured around the actual use of the app. And then we talk about some trails. We've got our podcast fe featured there as well. Uh, we have some big news, as I said, coming in January 2023. So uh, keep eyes on our channels, keep eyes on our emails, keep eyes on as many channels as possible. Because as you said, we're like a bad rash. We're gonna be everywhere. And uh, 2023 is, yeah, people are going to be pretty annoyed with Higer because they're just going to be everywhere. <laughs> My thanks to Owen for explaining in great detail exactly what the Hiker app can do. And I do hope that's encouraged you to at least try the free version and see if it works for you in your area and your part of the world. If there's any questions or anything like that, please do pop to the show notes on the website where all the links will be. And of course, you can drop Owen a line direct to ask him any specific questions. But I think it's all fairly clear and I hope you get a lot out of it. I shall be using it on my Christmas Day walk if it's, uh, if it's any consolation. Now, I did make a mistake at the beginning. I suggested you go to the Explorers Direct website. It's actually called the Explorers Connect or explorersconnect.com. And of course, the show notes will be uh, linking directly to them as well. And of course, you might be sitting there over your Christmas pudding looking for something adventurous and to meet other adventurous people who have got very similar ideas and ambitions to yourself. So that's something worth looking for. So as we come to the end of the year, folks, I just want to say thanks to everybody who have supported us all the way through these many, many years, 17 years now of doing these podcasts. So I know we've had waves of enthusiasm and, and waves of lack of enthusiasm in the last couple of years, but I'm getting back up to speed again now, and I hope you will continue to enjoy the variety of input that we are creating and putting out. And... If nothing else, I just hope that we see across the media and across the world in 2023 a little less greed and a little more kindness. It would be good to see some happiness and kindness in the world. So until next time, folks, have a good Christmas with your loved ones. Stay safe and well and bye for now. Yeah.